Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit about World of Warcraft, classic World of Warcraft. This should be a fun little video. I think it'd be fun for those of you who haven't played classic yet or don't really remember the experience or who've never played World of Warcraft or people who just want to have a little bit of nostalgia and to comment on some of the things I said and uh, to give some additional information down below. The question is, which faction should you play? Which faction's better, Horde or Alliance? Well, I don't think that there's one faction that's necessarily better, but they are very different particularly in uh, the world of classic where the quests are different the path through uh, the entire world is different there's uh, different quests for attunements uh, they're very very different experiences and if you were to play one and play the other as i have i've played both sides uh, over the years and i played both sides even um, even when the game was live you realize that it is a really really different gameplay experience even if you're playing the same class because all the content ends up being different other than perhaps once you walk into an instance most of the content is the same although the quests may be different so uh, let me go through a couple of things first of all whichever faction your friends all want to play that's probably the faction you should pick. World of Warcraft is a game that is really best enjoyed with friends. So throw all, all of this stuff out the window or just keep it in the back of your mind somewhere if your friends have already decided what faction they're going to play and just roll with them. It doesn't really matter that much in the long run uh, to your fun. What matters is that you're able to play with the people that you really want to play with. Now, first thing I want to tackle is aesthetics. Now, some people who are achievers in a game may be thinking, you know, why do I care that much about aesthetics? Well, when it takes a really long time to level up, as it does in Classic, many, many hours, eight days played to maybe 18 days played. I think my first character I got to 60, I took like 16 or 18 days to get all the way to level 60. It was a slow experience because I didn't know how to play the game yet. But that's a lot of hours that you're gonna be looking at a character, the aesthetics matter. That's a lot of hours you're gonna be spending in capital cities looking at the architecture. There's a lot of hours that you're gonna spend in the various towns looking at animations. So aesthetics actually do matter for the experience to me. And I think, for me, I think Alliance really does win the aesthetic contest. Not to say that there's not interesting things to look at on the Horde side, but you know, the races on the Alliance side tend to be a little bit prettier. You have the elves, which are aesthetically pleasing to look at. They also have great character animations. Uh, the humans look pretty good. They likewise have good character animations. The gnomes are very, very cute, and they also have very, very cute animations, particularly rogues. They're a lot of fun to watch. Um, and dwarves, I think, are the odd one that Odd ones out. I think dwarves are probably the ugliest alliance race in classic, both in terms of the way they look. They tend to look like old, wrinkly, angry old men with long beards, or they look like kind of frumpy girls. And their animations aren't nearly as fun to watch as the other races, including the horde races. So I think dwarves are kind of the unfortunate ones there. But if you're playing priest, it's a very strong temptation to play dwarf because of fear ward. Now, the Horde races are also, they're not as pretty, but they do look interesting uh, to a certain degree. So orcs have their own um, have their own animations, which are interesting to watch. They have a really uh, good running animation, uh, if, as I you know reminisce and, and think about the orc running animation. But all of them tend to be very hunched over and have a very brutish look to them. So if you're not into playing ugly, monstrous characters, Horde, just isn't a very pleasing aesthetic experience. Likewise, their animations tend to be a little bit awkward. The trolls look kind of silly as they cast their uh, cast their various spells. The undead, I think, actually have one of the coolest sets of animations for spell casting and some of the weakest animations for melee combat. Uh, so you can take that as you want. And I think Tauren are probably the weakest aesthetic race on the horde. They uh, have a casting animation which just looks very awkward with their their huge bodies. You always feel like you're running very slowly because they're bigger than everything else. Um, this new version of Classic that's coming out in a couple of weeks won't have this issue, but in the old version of 
the original version of World of Warcraft, the way the camera was attached to a character made playing a Taran really annoying, particularly if you were playing as a druid, as the camera wouldn't be able to look around all of the geometry of certain places. Like if you were in Scarlet Monastery, you wouldn't be able to really see anything around your bear or around your healing druid. It was quite annoying. So all in all, I think the the aesthetic contest for the character models themselves in the animations is squarely in favor of the Alliance. It's a far more pleasing experience. Uh, but some people really do like the monsters, so it just depends on you know what makes you feel the best aesthetically. A lot of people like to look at fierce, angry orcs um, who are hunched over and swinging big swords. It does look cool. Now, I will say that uh, the aesthetics of the cities are also, to me, very firmly in favor of the Alliance. You have Darnassus, which is a really beautifully designed uh, place to look at aesthetically. Unfortunately, it's in a place on the map where you don't use it very much. Uh, but it, boy, it looks really cool with the trees and the various colors and the temples and the water everywhere. It's a really beautifully designed uh, piece of work. Um, I think Iron Forge is also really, really cool looking as far as the aesthetics go. It feels very big, very epic. Um, there's lots of griffins flying in and out all the time. There's the great forge in the middle. It's just a really well-designed city. It looks great. Um, they started with a, a different design for Alpha, if you ever go look up the Alpha one. But the, the final design, which is smaller than the Alpha design, uh, which originally had two tiers, is, is quite good. I really like it. Um, Stormwind also looks really good too. It's a big castle city. I think it's the first city they designed, so things feel slightly out of proportion. Um, you know, the angles are are slightly off, slightly cartoonish in a lot of places, and the scale seems slightly small, but it's still a really great looking city. Contrast this with uh, the Horde side where really you have Orgamar, which is a very interesting looking city, but it looks very brown. Um, and then you have Undercity, which looks like Nightmare Before Christmas. It's rather interesting looking with the, like the green pools and stuff, but it's also a little bit claustrophobic. It doesn't feel like you're in a really big place when you're in Undercity. Um, Orgamar does feel like a big city. I think Thunderbluff is probably the weakest city of all of them. No one likes to spend time there because it's close to Orgamar and it's less functional than Orgamar and it doesn't look as good. You have a bunch of Indian teepees that make up what really doesn't look like a city. It just looks like a collection of tents. Um, and so that kind of goes against the feeling of like going into a city. It really looks far too open, far too wide, and uh, it looks like Orgamar, very brown. In fact, more so, it looks like one shade of tan uh, throughout the entire city. I think that's probably the weakest city all uh, of all of them. Luckily, though, depending on which side you play, you don't really have to spend a lot of time in a city that you find not too pleasing. Iron Forge is the place where people really hang out on the Alliance, and Orgamar tends to be the city where everyone hangs out on the Horde, and both of those look pretty good. I still think the aesthetics of place tend to be you know, better for the Alliance, and that actually extends out to all of the questing hubs. All of the, the little towns that you go to that are, are horde towns, if they're an undead town, I think they're pretty interesting looking, but that's just because they're like a decrepit version of a human town, uh, whereas all of the orc cities they just they look like tent cities wherever you go it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like a real town where anybody's permanently settled or there's a permanent encampment um whereas with the alliance you have these elf towns they look like they're very ancient in some cases they're very pretty to look at so i think i think the aesthetics in general are are better for the alliance and that also tends to include the zones themselves if you're playing as a human, you start off in Elwyn Forest, which is a forest that looks nice. It's green. Um, and then you go to uh, Westfall, which is like a dry little farmland. It doesn't look that great. Uh, but then you have Duskwood, which, which looks great, and Red Ridge, which looks okay. Um, the Night Elf side tends to have really great looking areas that are all different variations of forests. Whereas on the Horde side, you have two paths you go. You're either going... Uh, all the orcs and the Taran get funneled into the barrens, which is just a, it's barren. It's a very desolate looking area. It's not very cool to look at. Uh, or you're in Silver Pine Forest, which I think is, is a much more interesting zone. So the aesthetics, I favor Alliance very slightly as far as how you end up, you know, questing through the game. And after those zones, you tend to be mixed up in 
you know, in zones that are quote contested where there's going to be the other faction present for you to fight with, uh, which is great. So that's my opinion on aesthetics. Give me your opinion down below. Last thing I'll add though is the armor. So the armor looks different on different character models. Orcs look really cool in plate armor and in, and all the armor looks great on orcs in general. Uh, they have these big shoulders. So the iconic, you know, Warcraft shoulder plates tend to look really good on orcs. They look big and scary and menacing. That high warlords gear looks really good on an orc, but you have models like the Tarin in which things just look awful. Nothing ever looks good on a Tarin. Tarin doesn't have feet, so it can't wear boots. Its shoulders are hunched in a weird way. So its shoulder pads are huge, but they're always at some kind of weird angle where like the, you know, if it's a high warlord thing or a shaman thing, they're crossing above the head. The head is kind of craning, craning out over the body and the helmet doesn't, in a lot of cases, doesn't even cover the head. If a big exposed neck. Uh, Tarin look really bad in armor in general. They're like the worst looking race and the worst looking race in armor. Uh, but orcs tend to look really, really cool. Male humans do too. In fact, most of the alliance races tend to look good. Uh, the exception being gnomes and dwarves because their character models are simply too small for you to really see the, ar the armor uh, properly. So, you know, I don't know. It could go either way for them. If you're looking at high warlord gear versus grand marshal gear, I think the high warlord gear looks better. That's my opinion on that. But let me know what you think about uh, the PvP armor for each faction. Um, now let's go into questing because there's different advantages for each um, for each faction for questing. I will tell you, having played both, the questing experiences are very different, not just depending on which faction you pick, but which area of which faction. There's uh, two main questing paths of for the horde there's the silver pine forest which begins at undercity with the undead area and then there's going to be the barrens which leads from orgamar and there's a starting area you know close to that and then there's a starting area over by undercity as well so if you're playing as undead and you go through to undercity and then you go down to silver pine forest it tends to be a pretty smooth leveling experience overall it's a it's a very good leveling experience. The quests are in a very convenient and easy to understand format uh, where it's easy to go find the area that you need to go get an item or go kill certain monsters at. Um, it's not as much the case with uh, the orcs and trolls. Orcs and trolls uh, start over by Orgrimmar and in, the, in Duratar is the name of the zone. And they tend to end up with these quests where they you're kind of running back and forth quite a bit over uh, this very orange landscape that's rather boring to look at. And it gets kind of slow. And then the Tarin, theirs is not that much better. You're kind of running back and forth in the in the Mulgore zone until you both get funneled into the Barrens, which is a gigantic zone where you're going to be doing lots of back and forth running. So I, th I think the undead experience is pretty smooth. The horde experience is not quite as smooth, but once you get into the Barrens and there's so many people there and it's really not hard to quest, everybody can help you figure out what you need to do. It's really not bad at all. And of course, legendary Barrens chat. There's so many people in the Barrens that uh, the chat is so alive that that makes it a good experience even though the zone i don't think is a very uh, very efficient zone for questing it sure is a lot of fun to hang out in the barrens and chit chat with people i will say on the alliance side for both sides there's uh there's actually three different paths uh, so the the horde has two main paths whereas the uh, alliance has three paths for early leveling so there's the dwarf path, which starts you over by Iron Forge, and then you go up to Loch Modan, uh, and then up through Wetlands, um, and up to Arathi Highlands eventually. And then there's the human path, which will take you, you'll start by Stormwind, you'll go through Elwyn Forest, you'll go through Westfall, then you do Red Ridge, then you do uh, Duskwood, and then you, by that time, should be able to go out to Stranglethorn Vale, which is where all the pvp happens it is a great zone and it's usually a big step into a meat grinder for people who just hit level 30. Uh, it's it's a great experience so i think the alliance leveling experience up to level 30 is a little bit smoother particularly if you're playing humans if you're playing elves it's less smooth you start running into horde at about level 20 as you go into ashenvale and uh, the quests are just not very efficient in ashenvale 
and eventually you go through, you know, Stone Talon Mountains. The quests are not efficient there, but you, you know, you'll eventually end up in Desolus where the, the quests get a little bit better. Um, but overall, I think the, the quest experience 1 to 30, it's much better Alliance side. Uh, now, after 30, things get very, very jumbled up. You'll be lucky, by the way, if you get to 30 without having to switch continents, because one of the things that'll happen if you're focusing exclusively on quest content, you're not doing instances, is that you'll run out of quests. It's a thing that happens in Classic, which means you'll have to take the boat over to, to, to Darnassus, which is a, a pain, right? It's, it's harder to get... Uh, between the cities for alliance, um, that's a that's a big thing because you, in order to get over to um, the night elf zone, let's say, you have to walk all the way through wetlands because the boat leaves from Minithal Harbor, not Ironforge or Stormwind. Uh, it's much less convenient, and then it goes to uh, Darnassus, and you have to walk all the way through Darkshore and stuff to get to where you want to go. Whereas with the Horde, you can just take a Zeppelin. It's way more convenient uh, to do that. So once it comes time to actually get around the world, Horde is way better. You have Zeppelins that go between Undercity and Orgrimmar, two, two cities that are very convenient for accessing all the zones uh, that you want to access, particularly as you get towards endgame. So Undercity is right by Eastern Plaguelands and Western Plaguelands, which are two in-game zones where you're going to be doing a lot of questing, you're going to be doing a lot of grinding, you're going to be doing a lot of gathering, of materials it's very convenient or you can go over to Orgamar, which is right by uh you know winter spring it's right by uh it's not too far from silithus it's one of the closest cities you can go to get to silithus which is where again you'd be doing a lot of farming for in-game materials so once you get past uh the the early leveling stage i think for horde it becomes way better it's so much faster and easier to get around this horde it really is a big advantage so if you're looking uh towards the end of the game and you're thinking well what's going to be more convenient for me to just get around the world it's definitely going to be horde over alliance uh, there's a clear advantage there i will say another thing about horde which is that it is especially as you're leveling um all of the instances are in a much more convenient location than they were for alliance uh, just as an example you have scarlet monastery which once you get to 30 you're going to be spending a lot of time in scarlet monastery trying to get experience and gear some of the best gear that you can get in that level range is going to come out of scarlet monastery and it's right by undercity so you can just go over to undercity hearth to undercity find a group real quick run up to scarlet monastery and do it one two three four times if you want to whereas alliance if you want to do scarlet monastery you have to find a group you guys have to fly to South Shore. You have to walk all the way through the uh, all the way through the the Alterac Highlands or whatever um, across the lake by Undercity. Hope you don't get ganked. Finally, get to Scarlet Monastery. Run through the elites, past all of the horde that are there all the time, into the instance to finally do Scarlet Scarlet Monastery. It's a way a way more annoying experience, and that's not that's not the end of it too you have rfk and rfd are at the bottom of of the barons which is a horde zone they're not that hard to get to as alliance except for the fact that if you take the lift there's horde guards on the lift so you're going to have to figure out how to deal with them or you're going to be t uh you're going to be taking a boat from uh booty bay over to ratchet and then you're going to have to run all the way through the barons with a bunch of horde that aren't pvp tagged that could kill you if they want to uh in order to get to rfk and rfk and rfd that's razorfin crawl and razorfin downs rfk rfk is a late 20s razorfin downs is uh, late 30s you have Shadowfang Keep is in a horde zone. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of instances that are in horde zones. It's much easier to get to the instances as you're leveling up as horde, uh, including like um, Maradon is right next to a horde city. So once you get past level 30 in particular, I think it's much easier to level as horde. It's way more convenient. So keep that in mind. If that's something that you're going to be looking at, um, trying to maximize the efficiency of questing and, and doing instances and not spending a lot of time wandering around the world uh horde has a much smoother experience after level 30. um now here's the thing about in-game though in-game rating it's not not quite the same so alliance is a little bit more conveniently located for most of the in-game rating with the exception of scholomance um and uh, undead strat which are two instances that you'll do it in game but it's not particularly hard to get to those you can fly all the way up to lights hope chapel um, from iron forge it takes an extra few minutes compared to walking out from Undercity uh, or just flying there from Undercity, but it's really not that big a deal. But you are really close to Blackrock Mountain, which means you 
you only have like a one or two minute flight to go over to Searing Gorge or to, to Burning Steps and just run into Black Rock Mountain real quick, do BRD, do Molten Core, do uh, Blackwing Lair. All of your uh, big in-game instances are going to be in Black Rock Mountain, or not all of them, but uh, three of them are going to be inside of Black Rock Mountain. So it's very convenient to be Alliance for those. Um, likewise, it's still not bad to be Alliance to do Anixia. You have to, you got, you got to go over to um, uh, to where Jaina is. I'm trying to remember the city right now. You guys will tell me in the comments as it as it comes to me. Um, and uh, then you got to swim across the swim across the pond there, swim across the bay, and then you're at Anixia. It's not that much more convenient if you're Horde because you got to go all the way through uh, uh, the Swamp of Sorrows zone to get to the to get to Anixia's lair. Um, so that one's not not that big either. So in game in game access, it's slightly better for Alliance. Um, although once you get to AQ40, it doesn't matter that much anymore. You're either flying from Darnassus, which is a long flight or you're flying from Orgamar, which is also a long flight, uh, unless you're figuring out how to take the boat over to like Ratchet or something like that. Um, otherwise, or if you have your, um, if you're an engineer, you can hearth right to Gadget's End and then it's then it's really, really convenient. But that's what you'll be doing for, for AQ40. It doesn't really matter that much. So in-game convenience, it's a little bit on the side of Alliance. And that is kind of true for in-game farming. Um, it's a little bit easier to, like farm black dragon scales and stuff like that if you're alliance and it's a little easier to get to the to the high level zones where you're going to be uh, trying to mine and herb as well so keep that in mind now lore and flavor this is going to be subjective depending on how you like different races and like different pieces of lore the alliance is going to be traditional fantasy races with traditional fantasy lore uh, so that means the humans are you know, humans, they're medieval humans with some, with, you know, with some extra stuff to them. And then, you know, you've got elves, which are the ancient night elves, and they're uh, probably the most interesting alliance race, I think, as far as history and lore. Uh, they have 10,000 years plus of history that's very interesting that predates like the the world being split into two continents. Uh, most of the interesting ancient characters like Illidan are night elves. So I think the night elves really probably have the best lore. Um, of all the races you know gnomes and dwarves are pretty standard they're you know they're engineering types they live in mountains uh it's uh it's okay i think it's good so i like the alliance lore uh quite a bit i like the flavor of the alliance lore quite a bit but the horde also has a lot of interesting things i think the undead is probably the most interesting faction you have this idea that you are undead but you have a free will which leaves you in an interesting position uh, where most people shun and hate you. You have a life that existed beforehand as a human, if you're thinking of like RP purposes. Uh, and as you experience all of the quests on uh, the undead side, all of these NPCs have some kind of weird memory of being human. So they're undead humans, um, but they are fundamentally different people than they were when they're alive. And they have a very different attitude, a very kind of wicked and evil attitude. Uh, so if you're into a little the darker stuff, it's definitely going to be undead and, and horde in general. The orcs are not to me are to me not quite as interesting as say the trolls. I think the trolls have a an interesting backstory to them, um, and the Taran are a little bit boring as well. But they're both okay. Uh, I really, you know, for me, I kind of like the more traditional good fantasy races versus trying to feel. Uh, you know, if I want to feel like a, a bad guy, I think I like Horde a little bit better. But Horde definitely has some very interesting lore on the undead side, and the the orc side's not too bad either. I think uh, I, one of the things I wish that they had had more over the years, even since Classic, is more troll lore. But that's just me. Um, now, the last couple things I want to talk about are probably important for achievers, and that is thinking about in-game rating and thinking about in-game PvP. These are the, the two big activities that people like to do once they get their characters to level 60. And I'll tell you, it, it actually doesn't matter which faction you choose. Not one faction is better or worse at either of those things. Whether it's in-game rating or it's PvP, uh, there's no faction that's better or worse. People will tell you that there are, but having played on both sides, um, it doesn't really work out that way. Yes, Paladins have great buffs, 
but shaman have wind fury or put it the other way shaman have wind fury totem it's like yeah but paladins have amazing buffs it ends up working out uh working out fine depending on whatever side you're on things tend to work themselves out for rating likewise for pvp there's this idea that a horde has better racials than alliance and while skill of the forsaken is definitely a great racial the rest of the racials are just not as good in in pvp compared to that one good one which is the undead one uh and that's kind of how it is on the human side there's escape artist which is decent and then not all the racials are very good for pvp um they're just they're kind of uh, an extra thing to think about when you're choosing a race like which racial is going to be the best so it doesn't matter that much for pvp you do have this idea that um, horde or better at PvP is what people thought back in the day. But I think that was because I played Alliance. If I played the other side, people are like, Alliance are better at PvP. The truth is, it just matters what server you're on and where people ended up being located. So if you're on a server where all the best players, for whatever reason, ended up on Alliance, you're going to think Alliance are the best PvPers. Um, or you ended up with people who are not good at working working together on a team, then they're going to feel like they're worse at PvP. And so the the tendency has always been to, to think that something about the other faction is unfair to it. But it, it just kind of who ends up on what faction. And once you get to Altarac Valley, this is one thing I do want to mention. So in Altarac Valley, the original version, Horde have an advantage because their starting cave is basically halfway up the map. Whereas the Alliance starting cave is all the way at the back. And uh, so Horde have a big advantage as far as rushing Belinda goes. But after that, that, you know, that starts to disappear, particularly when you realize that there's a big choke point called, a, called the bridge into, uh, into the last little stronghold there in Altrak Valley. So Altrak Valley actually ends up being kind of worked out evenly, though it's really hard to avoid Belinda being killed if you have the entire... Um, you have the entire raid kind of Zerg Rush Belinda. And I don't know what the status of AV is going to be when they release AV or if it's going to launch with Altrak Valley. Uh, because the original version of Altrak Valley had hordes and hordes of elite, which uh, elites, uh, elite guards, which completely negated your starting position. And once they took all the elite guards out, then all of a sudden Horde had this advantage where they could rush uh, Belinda really quick and then and then move on from there and cap all of the bunkers within uh, just a couple of minutes of each other. Um, but that's, you know, I don't know exactly how they're going to iterate it. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, Horde has a better time in Altrak Valley or not. If they don't have the elites in play, Horde usually does a little bit better in Altrak Valley, but not always. Um, usually you have to just do a different strategy with Alliance, uh, which is either Turtle or, you know, full rush and hope that you gain some time when you're, when you're capping towers. Uh, so anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about with there. There's not a clear winner on which faction is better. Your experience will change as you level and you go through it. For my part, I think I've preferred Alliance more than Horde, having played both sides. Uh, but all my friends are going to play Horde, so I'm probably going to play Horde. I think we're rolling on Herod, uh, by the way, if you guys want to play with me or or uh, send me hateful messages or something like that. I don't care. Uh, but it, either way, that's, that's probably where we're going to end up, and I'm probably going to end up playing Horde. And I'm going to have a great time because I'm going to play with my friends. And so even if my character is not as pretty as uh, my character would be if I were to play on the Alliance side... It's okay, because what matters is that the, the gameplay is still fun on either side, and I'm able to actually play uh, play the game with the people that I want. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and leave me your tips down below, your thoughts about which faction you like a little bit better, and I'll see you guys next time.